So who knows? It's kind of like if you, if you give a mouse a cookie, like they need a glass of milk, right? Like if you give me a pair of socks in it, like I'm gonna need some yarn cozies, so. My name is Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. Welcome to episode 65 of the Love and Stitches podcast. Today is Wednesday, May 27th, 2020, and it's a lovely day here in North Texas, just outside of Dallas. So a few things real quick before we get started. I'm back. I am so excited to be back in my yarn room today. If you um are just joining us for the first time, or if you just haven't um, heard me sit, mention this before, <clears throat> the past two months, right before like quarantine started, my mother-in-law moved in with us. And then just a week ago, my brother-in-law came into town. So we actually had a like full house. And so I haven't been able to podcast down here in my yarn room for over two months. And I am so excited to be back down here. It's just a way better backdrop. Plus like I like, I just enjoy being back here. Um, I have rearranged a few things. I emptied this cube here and moved most of my fingering weight over here, my self striping here. And then that allowed me to keep my cute little letter board visible because before it was right down there and I completely, I mean, I'm blocking it a little bit now, but I was completely blocking it while I was podcasting. The other thing that I wanna say real quick is that I am not mic'd today. I'm actually having some issues with my microphone. Um, so hopefully um, you can still hear me okay. This is how I used to podcast anyway with no mic. It's actually kind of freeing because I can just like move around and not get tripped over my cord. Um, but I know the audio is just a little bit clearer when I have the mic. Um, however, I recorded a video yesterday and there was like this low humming every like, I don't know, 10 minutes for like 30 seconds. And I just don't know what that is. So I'm hoping it was just the microphone and that this sounds good. And soon I will get an even either the same quality or an even better mic and hopefully resolve that problem. But for today, this is how it's going to be. So fingers crossed we have good audio. Sorry, I'm sniffling. I'm still drinking my coffee and it's still, it's morning. So I think all of that is just, it's just happening. Oh, I am wearing a, one of my favorite t-shirts from McKinney Knittery. I literally, I have two of these and I pretty much alternate them every day. I love wearing these. They're just that soft material. Um, and I like the V-neck and I don't know, they're just super comfortable. I like how they have the like longer sleeves because sometimes women's, women's cut t-shirts have little baby sleeves, which are fine too, but I like these these sleeves. Anyway, that's from McKinney Knittery. You can totally order one online if you want one. Oh man, I gotta stop sniffling. Okay, maybe I'll go grab a tissue in a second so you don't have to listen to that because that is just awful. But I have a new collaboration today. I am so excited to introduce you to Jamie and Andrea of the Mockingbird Fiber Co. podcast. Um, they are two sisters who live in East Tennessee. They are part-time indie dyers. Their yarn is beautiful. You have to check it out. I will have their website um, linked down below. Um, Jamie lives with her husband, daughter, and three dogs. And Andrea lives with her husband, two dogs, and a baby on the way. So don't you just love that they are sisters, that they are dog people. We are totally, we can totally relate. And they're from East Tennessee, which is so fun because I grew up in Tennessee, if you did not know, um, just outside of Nashville. So yes, I have a few little, I have to remember, I can't really turn away from the camera too much. I have their yarn here in my mini yarn cozies. Um, and I will have to just um, write the color names down when I when I get to that here in a little bit. Um, but they do have beautiful, beautiful yarn. Now they podcast about once a month um, because they do have to get together to podcast, which makes things challenging, I'm sure. Um, and I will have their Instagrams and their podcast channel and their episode linked in the description box because we are both going to be answering, well, all three of us are going to be answering the same five questions that you guys put on Instagram for us and I will be answering mine later in the episode. So thank you so much to Jamie and Andrea for collaborating with me this week. I'm really excited and I hope you will go check out their channel and subscribe to them if you love it. I think you will. Okay, 
So let's dive in to some finished objects. I have some tiny baby finished objects this week, a bunch of mini yarn cozies. And I can't quite remember what I had done last week and what I had done this week. I just got all the projects onto Ravelry. So I am just gonna kind of quickly show them to you. I know that this one was already done. This is a plain and simple mini yarn cozy. I think this one was done. That's also a mini yarn cozy. But I believe since then I've done this one. This is a cable like their faux cables are really easy. Mini Yarn Cozy. All of these are the 20 gram size. I have one here. This is one of the Mockingbird Fiber colorways, and I will try to remember to put it on the screen. I'm probably not going to use it for a little bit because <laughs> I need something to put in my cute little cozies, um, but this will be great for my scrappy blankets. I'm excited. So that's what the 20 gram looks like. He is nice and stretchy, um, so you can you know, have different size um, skeins in there because these are both 20 gram skeins from Mockingbird Fiber, but you can see this one's a little poofier than this one. So sometimes they just vary a little bit. I have seen some people flip these upside down and pull their yarn out of the bottom or what's intended to be the bottom. And that totally works too. I know I have completed this one. This yarn is Malia Made It Disney Princess Parade. And I have another one started that I'm going to show you here in a second. That's like the rest of the stripes because it went uh, like pink to green and then it started blue back to pink and purple. So I'm excited to show you guys that in just a second. So that's all three versions of the mini yarn cozy. And then also since last week I've made some 50 gram mini, mini yarn cozies. This is another Malia made it. This one is Luna Lovegood. So that's the 50 gram size. You can see next to the 20 gram size, it's just a little bit bigger. And then I finally <laughs> made my cable version. Okay, I have taken these in and out so many times. You should not do that. Once you put your yarn in the cozy, like try your best to just keep it in there till you're done using it. And you're gonna like rewind it into a tiny ball or a tinier cake. Um, but because I was taking photos, I kept moving these around. So they've gotten a little wonky, but here's my 50 gram cabled version and it matches with the plain and simple one because I am knitting socks out of that. So lots and lots of cozy knitting this week. I think in total I made one, two, three, four, maybe, maybe four. I can't remember if this one was done or not. I can't remember where I was last week because I had made that mistake and I had to take some out. So I got a little bit confused, um, but lots of cozies and that pattern is coming out on Friday, May 29th. Um, make sure that you go watch the love letter video, which will be linked below to get your 30% off coupon code so that you can get that pattern at the best price. And I will talk all about this pattern in the news section here in just a little bit. All right, I just <laughs> took a break so I could uh, clear up a little bit. I think you're just getting, what am I stuck on here? You're getting my, uh, my morning voice, my deep, serious morning voice here. So sorry about that. I'm still drinking coffee. This is my second cup of coffee out of my Poly Studios mug. I just got this week um, from my mother-in-law some glass mugs and I'm really, really excited to use them. So that's going to be like my next thing. I might be phasing out my ceramic mugs so that I can have glass mugs. We'll see. I don't know. Anyway, I have delicious chocolate coffee this week and it is so, so good. So we've talked about, <laughs> we've done the introduction. We have talked about finished objects. And so let's talk about some whips. As you can probably guess, because I spent so much time on those yarn cozies, I haven't done a whole lot on my other whips this week, but I have done just a teensy little bit. So let me show you my socks real quick here and let me get things organized. I guess I just, I start to just throw all my projects together into like one bag, like stacks of float totes usually. And so they get all messy. Like I have a Target receipt in there. <laughs> Okay. Oh, and some gum. What in the world? 
The, my, my knitting bags are like my purse and I just put everything in them. I don't even bring a purse. I just bring like this when I go places because I'm not really going out in public. I'm just going to, you know, in the car to my mother-in-law's wherever. And so it's just more convenient. Okay, so let me show you my socks real quick. I have done a whopping oh, six rows, <laughs> maybe, um, but this yarn is from Mustache Yarns. Let me see if I can get the label here because uh, yes, I believe it is called Jelly Belly. Oh, there we go, Jelly Belly. And isn't it just so fun? I am right at the point where I need to put in my heel. I'm gonna be using this mystery soft gray yarn for the heel just so that I don't interrupt the stripes or anything. And I got so lucky. I was worried last week about, because I have these thick stripes and because I started toe up, not recommended for self-striping yarn, that I would be splitting the stripes like in a weird place for my heel. <clears throat> Goodness. Um, but I got so lucky and look, I'm right where I need to start the heel. And look, I just started this, um, next color. That's going to be perfect. So I'm actually going to have a heel perfectly before my next stripe. I can't even believe it. Like that could not have been planned. It probably won't even happen on the second sock, even though these are perfectly matched skeins. That's the great thing about mustaches. It comes in two perfect match skeins. Um, I'm not a perfect knitter, so my tension is not exactly the same all the time. And I know that that second sock might not be exactly the same as the first. But anyway, I am ready to put in a heel. I'm not even gonna move my stitch marker because I barely knit on this this week, but I do hope to um, do a little more here soon. I need to because I have more socks that I need to get to knitting on because sock week is coming up in a couple months and I wanna get those samples made. Um, but just to answer, I know I get questions sometimes on these markers. These are marking every 20 rounds. So this right here is the last round of the toe. 20 rounds, 20 rounds, 20 rounds, and five, I believe five rounds, because my foot needs 65 rounds. I wear like a seven and a half, sometimes usually like an eight now, my feet are growing, I guess, um, women's shoe. And so 65 rounds at my tension gives me just exactly what I need when I do the fish lips kiss heel. So those are going really great, even though they are going really slow. <clears throat> slow. They are going to be my May and June socks, I guess. But there we go. You can only do what you got time to do. Um, also, I worked a very little bit <laughs> this past weekend on my Lilium. So Lilium is this gorgeous um, top by Megan Nodecker, who is Pippin Pin. And I've got a lot going on here. It's pretty tangled, but look how pretty it is. I still have yet to find a progress keeper, so I better do that right now. Okay, I'm going to put in this little cute shark progress keeper from last year's Sock Week. Um, and it is from Simply Serving. And those were just exclusive to Sock Week. But there we go. I'm going to I'm gonna actually put a stitch marker in this week so we can see how much progress <laughs> that I'm gonna maybe make this next week. But I have knit enough to try it on. I tried it on and it fits. It's a little tight, but, or not tight, like it's just fitted and that's just not what I usually do or make. Um, so I think it fits correctly. It's just different for me. Come on, hair. There we go. Um, and I have started on one sleeve. So that's why you see multiple needles here. So I've got the sleeves on my size one needles. I'm a pretty loose knitter. I think this pattern called for a two and a four and I'm knitting a one and a three because I'm just a loose knitter. So I've just barely started on my sleeve, but they're absolutely tiny. Um, so it won't take me long. You can see they're short rows because I've got longer on the top than on the bottom, which is super, super cool. So I just need to, I want, or my plan is to do one sleeve and then the other. And I'm doing this with my second ball of yarn. See, I've barely even touched it. While my other yarn that I've been using for the rest of the sweater is still attached down here at the body. So I am going to finish up the sleeves. 
you know, cut my yarn and then basically the entire top half will be done. I can even try it on again, which I intend to just to make sure everything looks good. And then on the body, I plan to incorporate my two balls of yarn together to do helical knitting. Now I'm not 100% sure how helical knitting will do with this yarn, which I haven't even told you about yet. I'm so sorry. So this yarn is a, my stomach just growled, a 50% uh, wool, 50% cotton from Gritty Knits, and the colorway is Josephine. And it's just a lovely light pink. It's one of my favorite colors, so I am very excited about it. <laughs> and I think it's gonna look really, really good. Um, so yeah, I'm going to just incorporate those two balls of yarn together to do helical knitting. I'm hoping that that will work. And then I'm just going to knit as a long of a body as I can because I am, am a little short on yardage. So I probably won't be able to knit it as long or as wide as the pattern requires, but that's okay because it's an A-line shaping. It has lots of extra room. And so if I don't increase all the way um, to what the pattern says, it will still fit me and be flowy. So work in progress here. I cannot wait to get going on this. Once I have the sleeves done, it will be a really easy project to just take around with me um, wherever. Um, so yeah, I probably need to get those sleeves going here soon so that it is at that point and it's just easy take along knitting. One more project that I started just yesterday, um, I am making, or my plan is to make one more mini yarn cozy before the pattern releases on Friday. Um, and I wanted to make another 20 gram self striping. So here was my first 20 gram self striping. These are actually from the same ball of yarn. You can see that that green is the same color. So what I did not think about when I started this one is how many stripes my 20 gram mini would make. Because in this self striping yarn, it's a long self striping pattern. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different colors. And as you can see, this little mini guy only has five different colors in it. So I should have thought about that ahead of time, but you can't really know until you knit your first cozy because um, all self-striping yarn is different. There are some standards, like most of them have, or a lot of them have five or six um, rounds of a color if you're making socks, but this is much smaller than a sock in the round. So the stripes are ended up being taller because the yarn has, you know, it can go around more times. <clears throat> I hope that makes sense. <laughs> um, but anyway, so what's fun about that is you can create all kinds of different cozies out of the same ball of yarn, depending on where you start your stripes. So I don't love how this one turned out um, with these colors. Honestly, it kind of reminds me of like a flag or something, um, but that's just that's just how it ended up and I'm, I'm not getting rid of it, it's fine. But I do love blues and purples and pinks. So this one I started at the green, two shades of blue, purple, and then hopefully I can end it on the pink. That's my plan. So that's my last little whip here is a self-striping mini yarn cozy. So I am still planning to make a whole rainbow set of the mini yarn cozies, but I know that I'm not gonna get it done before the pattern releases. I have made four so far and I've kept the leftovers because I might turn them into like one 100 gram cozy. And I think I have eight colors remaining. So I'm just gonna do these over the next couple of weeks and just finish those out and I'll have a whole cute little rainbow set of mini yarn cozies. That was just one of those ideas that like I got and I couldn't let go of, so I just had to do it. I thought it was gonna be, I still think it's gonna be super, super cute, but it's, it's taking me longer than I thought. Not that the cozies really take a long time, it's just that I wanted to knit all the other versions and then uh, now I'm getting back to that. Plus I want to knit on my sweater and knit on my socks and cast on new things and crochet. There's just, there's never enough time to do everything. <laughs> um, okay, so let's go ahead and get into some questions. I'm going to answer a few questions from the Ravelry thread, but I'm going to start with the five questions that Jamie and Andrea are also answering over on their podcast. Don't forget that their episode is linked down below and it went up this morning um, just before mine. So it is live and you can go watch it as soon as you want to. 
Okay, so the first question, oh, and these questions came off of Instagram. So if you want to be um, one of the people that asks uh, questions for my podcast collaborations, make sure you're following me on Instagram at Nitty Natty and you can, um, I'll, I'll always ask in my stories, I'll put a little question box in and you can ask questions there. Okay, so the first question is, what is your design process like and where do you find inspiration? Jamie and Andrea are going to be answering the same thing for their dye process, so definitely go check that out. It's gonna be super interesting. So my design process is I usually come up with the idea first. So my inspiration a lot of times comes from um, maybe like a problem that I have found or a uh, um, like if I can't find a pattern for something, I feel like, oh, well, maybe I can create it myself. So that's kind of been the inspiration for more functional pieces like uh, float tote and the yarn cozies. Um, also the can and bottle cozies. I just, I never saw anything that I quite just loved that I thought looked classic and clean. Um, but other times, um, if I'm working with a dyer, they might say, this is the idea that I'm going for. And so I will kind of draw inspiration from that. So when I designed Architectura, um, uh, Chili Nitz and I, we, we talked about the inspiration being Gaudi and architect. And so I did a lot of research on him and figured out what, uh, what his style was and then um, used Connie's yarn to kind of like supplement that in. So it can come from different places, um, but I am starting to feel like maybe my niche is more like meeting the needs of knitters and crocheters or solving problems for knitters and crocheters or just doing things differently like with louisiana street um my shawl that starts at the the biggest end and then decreases down and that's something i want to explore um a lot more so i don't know that might be kind of the direction i'm heading i just kind of have to ride the design wave and see see what inspires me um, but my process is usually to come up with an idea um, and then I usually swatch um, yarns and pattern or stitch patterns, test out decreases, and then I usually will knit or crochet with my computer next to me so I can write up the design as I go. Sometimes I'll work a little ahead of myself, try to type out what I think is going to be coming up, work it, and then adjust it from there. So I'm always kind of working like yarn in hand, computer in hand, side by side so that I try to get everything like down on the computer because I know that I won't remember. Okay, next question. What is your favorite pattern you've created? And um, Andrea and Jamie are going to be answering their favorite colorway that they have dyed. So um, it's really hard for me to choose a favorite pattern. I, I think that one of my favorites is always going to be Float Toad. It was my very first paid for pattern that I put out on Ravelry and it's just it's just so functional. I use it all the time. I use it pretty much every day. I keep I keep my projects stored and my float tote all the time. I've got two of them here. Here's my the two skein size. And then the one skein size actually fits two 50 gram mini yarn cozies. So these two I've been using a lot lately. I will actually just set one inside the other and kind of just take them like that if I need to go somewhere and, you know, throw other things in. <laughs> but I do want to explore more like totes um, coming up to kind of make them more, even more bag-like if you want to carry them as a purse. So that's something that I want to do this summer. We shall see. I'm really hoping to carve out some time to do that here soon. Um, question three, this is a good one. How have your goals changed since you started creating? So yeah, I think my goals have changed a lot and just my intentions too. So when I, I guess when I first started knitting and crocheting, my goal was just to like make new things and learn new things. Um, I didn't have super clear goals. Um, but when I started out my like business, Love and Stitches and Knitty Natty, I really was um, geared a lot towards a lot more towards designing. Um, I thought that that was gonna be what I would spend most of my time doing. Whereas now I spend more time creating videos um, and I love doing it. I it just kind of, I wanted to start my podcast and then it just kind of took off into more videos and tutorials. And it's just something that I really, really enjoy making. Oh man, I forgot how it is recording down here. I have to deal with toaster barking at the front door. 
anyway, I think my goals have changed um, more that I am, I want to create a lot of video content and like help knitters and crocheters through tutorials. Um, but even more than that, because there's a lot of people that make tutorials, um, I really like creating videos that maybe um, contain information that is not out there a lot, like tutorials that you're not going to be able to search for all the time because they're very unique and different. Um, and, you know, more than just a basic stitch tutorial. And also just like fun knitting videos. <laughs> like I just love watching other people do the day in the life videos. Y'all seem to really like those too. Um, and just, you know, interesting knitting and crochet topics. So that's really been something that I've put a lot of, a lot of my time and effort into. Um, and then design this year at least has been secondary, but I am trying to um, amp that back up this summer. I have more on that here soon. Um, what is your favorite pattern from others that you've ever knit or crocheted. Um, so one of my favorite crochet patterns is the Flat Iron Shawl by Tony Lipsy, who's TL Yarncrafts. I made two of those and I would totally make more. Um, it is a fingering weight, three skein shawl, very simple, like perfect to just start and go. And it's great for stash. You can use three colors in your stash that are different, which is super awesome. So I love, love, love that one. Like I said, it made two. So um, as far as knitting, I don't know. It's hard to say a favorite. Maybe this right here that's always on the back of my chair. It's kind of getting stretched out. I probably shouldn't treat it that way. Um, but this is my Like a Cloud Cardigan by Hohi Locatelli. I wear it just about every day because in the morning, you know, when you first get up, it can be a little chilly and then um, cardigans are just so easy to slip off when you get warm. So even though it is a Texas summer, I still wear this mohair and um, wool sweater mostly every day. And it just, like I said, hangs out on the back of my chair. So it's there when I need it. So love that, Like a Cloud by Hohi Locatelli. And the last question is, how many socks did you have to knit before you figured out your perfect size, heel, and toe? Well, I still don't know if I've figured out my perfect size, heel, and toe, um, but I have been knitting socks the way that I currently do for maybe two years. Um, and I've been knitting for, I've been knitting socks for at least, how old am I? Probably at least 10 years. <laughs> so that's not to say that it's going to take you, you know, eight to 10 years to figure out your perfect socks. Um, I just think that it, the day and age that we're in where there's technology, where there's so many patterns, so many innovative ideas, it just makes it a lot easier to try new things. Um, so when I first learned to knit socks, I don't really know if people knit them differently than this, but it seemed like everybody was using double pointed needles and knitting heel flap and gusset and knitting from the cuff down. I, that's just what it seemed like to me. Um, so I knit socks like that for a long time. Um, but then I don't even know. It might, it's it's got to be longer than two years ago. Um, the short row heel became like really popular and the fish lips kiss heel, which is what I tend to use and the afterthought heel and self-striping sock yarn and just all kinds of amazing things. And so if you learn to knit socks like currently right now, you will be able to try out all of the different things super, super easily and kind of decide what is going to be great for you. As far as like pairs of socks, I would say it's probably going to take you at least, at least three pairs of socks or three socks. I guess if you don't want to knit a pair, if it's totally wrong, that's fine. Um, but it just takes time to figure out like how many rows do I need for my foot? How long do I like the leg? What kind of cuff do I like? What kind of heel, what kind of toe? And it just takes time. And I think it's totally fine um, to, even if you have a favorite formula, try something new and you might like it and you can always add it in. So if I buy a sock pattern, I am probably not gonna knit it to the, you know, to the T. I'm gonna change things about it. I'm gonna knit it the length I like. I'm gonna put in the heel that I know how to do from memory and adjust things and when you have your like basic formula then you're free to do that so did i answer that question yeah so yeah it took me it took me a while a few years but really it only takes like a few socks to do that if you try different things okay i want to do just a couple questions real quick from ravelry so let me head over there um this first question is from brandy latrice 
And she says, outside of knitting and crochet, I love to read also. Do you find it difficult to read and knit and crochet at the same time? Do you have any tips? At the moment, I find it easier to listen to audiobooks when I knit and crochet, but sometimes I want to read the physical books while I work. So I love that you keep up with reading and knitting and crochet. I feel like I barely read. I just read at uh, night right before bed on my Kindle. Um, but yes, I think it is totally possible to read and knit and crochet at the same time. So I have some tips for you. Um, so the first thing would be that if you want to read a physical book, you're going to have to have something to keep your your hands from holding the book. So I know on Amazon they make these like they make all kinds of book holders and those are whatever. I really like this. It's like a it's called a book bone. I think it's rubber and it has two weighted ends and it goes it lays on top of your physical book. And since it's rubber, it's a little bit sticky and you can literally with one hand use it to flip the page and then set it on top. Um, so I think that's a really great one if you enjoy reading physical books. Um, also, if you if you're okay with a digital version, I really like my Kindle. You can you know prop that up and then just with one tap, like you don't even have to let go of your knitting. You can just be like, do, <laughs> and go to the next page. Um, I really like to do that as well. Um, audiobooks, of course, are probably the best because then you don't even have to worry about turning pages. You can just keep your hands busy knitting and crocheting. You don't have to look at the words, which is great. Okay, so I can definitely knit without looking, but I cannot crochet without looking. So if you can crochet without looking, props to you. But as far as knitting goes, um, try to choose a project that is just knitting that is really simple maybe in the round so that you can just knit 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 without even having to look down and so that you can you know use your eyes to read so that's probably going to be the best pairing is something that is simple just knitting in the round stockinette stitch um, while you read okay next question is from wool headed um and oh i didn't see what your name was i'm so sorry hold on let me try to do that real fast uh heather okay heather um she says hi i had two questions for you love your podcast by the way thank you have you ever considered crocheting the base in the first couple inches along the side of the float totes in twine string and then the remainder in sugar and cream cotton i think that option would give them even more stability and durability i may have to give that a try and wanted to know your thoughts Caution though, I have crocheted with twine previously and it is a workout for the hand. So that's question number one. Let me stop there. I think that's a fabulous idea. If you do try that, will you please let me know how it goes? Because I think that that would be great. So what, I, what I'm understanding is that you would make the bottom plus like this part right here out of um, twine. Um, I think that would be really, really great. The only thing is trying to match the like thickness of the twine versus the sugar and cream cotton. So I'm um, holding the twine at least doubled, I guess, and seeing how that would do. But I think that's a great idea. Now, even just doing the cotton, holding the cotton doubled and crocheting at a tight gauge is a workout for the hands. So be really careful with the twine because yeah, you do not want to hurt your hands and get injured or, you know, rough up your skin too much. So just be careful with that. But I think that that would totally work. I think it would be amazing. And that sounds really cool. You should try that <laughs> and let me know. No pressure to do so, of course. Okay, next question from Heather. Um, in helical knitting, when you are working on a sweater and alternating skeins to avoid things like color pooling, the end of round marker stays in the same place for any changes in the sweater pattern, right? I mean, do you keep moving the end of round marker in this situation? Thanks so much. Okay, so in helical knitting, yes, your end of round marker stays the same. It really doesn't move. Um, you can just keep it in there or sometimes you can just take it out. <laughs> um, you don't necessarily have to like pay attention to it, um, except when you're going from like, the helical part to maybe something else. Like if you're splitting for the front and back, you obviously, you would wanna split where the end of round marker is. Unless your pattern is totally like repetitive around, um, like if it's just stockinette, 
it doesn't matter. You can split right where you are doing helical knitting. So some people will just take that end of round, beginning of round marker out completely because it confuses them um, like where to stop and start or, you know, change yarns. Um, but if you want to just keep it in and just keep slipping it, that is totally fine too. Um, but just know that it's going to be just marking where that divide is, but don't change your colors there. Make sure you keep changing your colors, you know, three stitches over and three stitches over. So I hope that helps. All right, let's go into some news. I know I'm leaving a lot of questions unanswered, but I am thinking about doing a, um, well, two things. One, I'm hoping to do a live here really soon. So I might be able to get some of those questions answered in my live. Um, but two, I have been getting a lot of questions about like YouTube, Instagram, and things like that. And so I thought I might just put together a video answering those questions. So I'm going to see if not, I will come back on next week's podcast and continue to answer those questions in the Ravelry thread. Don't worry, I am not going to leave your question unanswered, at least not intentionally. So if that happens, just ask again, because sometimes I do skip on accident. Okay, so this week um, there was a new video, my love letter to the mini yarn cozy. So make sure to head over and watch that video because there is a coupon code in there for 30% off the mini yarn cozy, which releases on Friday, May 29th. Um, also, there is another video, not on my channel, but on my friend Claire's channel. Her channel is E Claire Makery. I'll make sure to link it. Um, but she did an interview with me and we talked all about starting a YouTube channel, um, you know, tips and tricks for, uh, just, you know, getting confidence to start, um, learning to, you know, make videos, equipment that you need, all of that kind of stuff. Um, so make sure to head over and watch that. It was really fun to do that interview. Thank you, Claire, so much. And some of you were there when it premiered last Wednesday, which was a lot of fun. Um, okay, next thing. I have not done a live video in a really long time, and I do plan to do one this weekend. I need to talk to my husband first to make sure to know when a good time is to do it. Well, actually, now that I say that we might have something going on this weekend. So if we are able to do a live, I will put the time down here because I think, I can't remember if we're on the evening time or the morning time. I just, it's been a while. So I really wanna do a live here soon. If it doesn't happen this weekend, then I will do it the next weekend because my goal is to do them once a month. Um, so just stay tuned for that. I do plan on bringing those back and I'm sorry that it has been so long. Um, okay, so back to the mini yarn cozy, this little guy, the 20 gram and the 50 gram size, they are coming out on, on Friday. It is one pattern. So mini yarn cozy is the 20 and 50 gram size. And each, each one has the cables, self-striping and plain versions. Now I wanted to talk through like the, the buying options for those because there are some different buying options and I just wanna make sure that you know all of them so you can make the best choice for, for you. So um, you can get the, well, this is just two of them. You can get the mini yarn cozy. The regular price is $6, but make sure you get the 30% off coupon code because it'll be good for two weeks. Um, so that will make this, uh, I can't remember, 420? I think it's 420 when you get 30% off. I don't know for sure, um, but that's option number one. Option number two, you could get the Yarn Cozy Light and the Mini Yarn Cozy in a bundle. So that is going to be $9, which is definitely your best deal because that makes each pattern um, like $4.50. Whereas if you got the um, Yarn Cozy Light for $6 plus the Mini Yarn Cozy for $4.20, that is more expensive, right? $10.50, whereas you can get them for $9. So that would be your best deal if you have, if you don't have either of the patterns. And then the third, the third option is if you already own the Yarn Cozy Light on Ravelry, then you will get your very own coupon code. It will be sent to you via Ravelry, and I think it will go to your email as well. Um, but this coupon code is going to be for 50% off the Mini Yarn Cozy, making it 
$3. So essentially you're getting um, the bundle price, right? Because if you bought the Yarn Cozy Light, it was $6 and then $3 for the mini Yarn Cozy, that's $9, like the bundle. Um, so please, if you already have Yarn Cozy Light, wait for that 50% off coupon code so that you can use it. And please do not share that because it is just for people that have the Yarn Cozy Light already because I want to honor you and give you that bundle price. Now, if you bought the pattern on Etsy, I don't wanna leave you out. The 30% off coupon code for the mini Yarn Cozy will be good on Etsy. However, there isn't an easy way for me to contact and update people that have the um, already have the Yarn Cozy Light. So if you do have Yarn Cozy Light and you bought it on Etsy, will you please email me and I will get you a 50% off code so that you can buy the mini Yarn Cozy on Etsy. <sighs> okay, <laughs> I think I said all that correctly. Please let me know if you have questions about that. I am super, super happy to help. Okay, and then speaking of designs, I am just feeling super creative and full of design ideas lately and I wanna really get a lot of my ideas like um, written down, test, like uh, mock, mock made <laughs> and ready to go for this summer because summer is really an opportunity for me to like work really hard on my small businesses before I go back to work in August. Um, so I believe I'm going to be taking kind of a week off here, um, possibly in the second week of June. So what that would look like is your, you wouldn't see from me, um, like a, a Tuesday video or a podcast or maybe even Instagram. I might kind of just like take a week long, like time off from all of those time commitments so that I can work on my designs. Um, so if I do that, I will um, certainly let you know. Um, not because I don't think you guys would be okay with that. I know like many of you before have said, Natalie, do whatever you need to do. Like when you have videos, it's fine. Um, but I really love to be um, consistent for you. I like showing up for you every Thursday morning and, you know, maybe you watch me at, at your lunch break on Thursdays or whatever your routine is. I like being there. So I am going to try to warn you when I'm not going to be there and tell you why so that I can make even more content for you guys. So that will all, I will, I will announce all of that over on Instagram as well so that you're not worried about me <laughs> if I like fall off the face of the earth for a week. Okay, so now let's talk about life. So I'm just, I'm so happy. It's the first week of summer. I am back down here in my yarn room and studio, which means that my mother-in-law has moved into her new place. So if you wanna see a little bit of her new place, make sure you're subscribed to my other YouTube channel, This and That, because on Friday I am going to be showing how we organized her kitchen and pantry. It's gonna be a great video and you're gonna to get to see the whole family in that because we're all organizing, unpacking and cleaning in that video. Um, but I, I'm just excited because it was really, it was actually really nice to have um, family here during quarantine when we were all working at home, but it is also really nice to kind of have our house back and like kind of go back to a normal routine. Like this morning when I came downstairs and got my coffee, I could empty the dishwasher without worrying. It was gonna wake somebody up and, you know, start laundry and just kind of, you know, live in my own house again. I'm sure that a lot of you can relate to that when you have guests over, it's just like nice to be back to normal again. Um, I am actually, super eager. I'm After this, I'm going to go um, do some organizing in my own pantry because now I have a lot more food than fits in there because we divided up all the food that we'd bought during quarantine. And so I need to go figure that out. But I am going to be cleaning and organizing my entire house. One of my summer projects is to just declutter like crazy. Um, so Again, if you're interested in that, I am going to be recording it, filming it, posting about it all over on my other channel. So definitely, um, definitely head over there if you like stuff like that. I'm even getting interested in like a little bit of decoration. Like I'm not a huge decorations person, but um, yesterday I did get a new set of bedding for us. I got like 
a new a new comforter like it's really 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 thin for summer which is great because it gets so hot here um and cute sheets and cute pillows and it's like white and coral and i'm really excited i think it's going to make our bedroom just look completely different <laughs> so i'm excited for that and i don't know i want to get like new pillows for the living room and all kinds of stuff so i feel like I'm not usually like a person who likes to go shopping, but maybe it's being home so long. And now that I get to kind of clean up my place, I want to make it even more ours. So yeah, I'm excited to do that. And then also, um, if you would like to join us, uh, we are doing, my husband and I are doing a really fun summer read along. I have always wanted to read all of the Harry Potter books um, within a summer. And so we're gonna do that. We're starting on June 1st, which is Monday, um, and we're gonna read about a book a week. Um, there's two, there's nine weeks in June and July, and that's when we're gonna read all seven books. So we're gonna do like a catch-up week after book five, because it's the longest book, and then a catch-up week at the end. Um, so a lot of you have been sending me, um, uh, oh, who is it? De I think Desert Vista Dye Works has a Harry Potter self-striping colorway. And you're like, oh, you you gotta you need this for the Harry Potter summer reading challenge, and then that made me think, actually, I already have a skein of self-striping Harry Potter yarn. It's a different one, but I went ahead and grabbed it <laughs> because I thought that was such a great idea to start a new pair of socks for this um, for this reading challenge. So this is a yarn from Mustache. Where does it say Mustache on here? Well, it is from Mustache, I know it is, but it says it somewhere else. And it is called The Boy Who Lived. This yarn is so cool. I've actually already knit up a pair of socks in it. Um, I have a friend, uh, one of my best friends from high school, she loves Harry Potter, and I knit her a pair of socks um, out of this yarn a couple of years ago. And I, I had bought myself a skein too, and I've just never got around to knitting it. So what is super cool about this is that the stripes are not all the same size. Instead, they are about the width of like the spine of the book. So let me explain that better. So these colors are from the the book, either the book jackets or like the, um, I don't know what it's called. When you take that book jacket off, that dust cover off, that part of the book, just like the cover, that's what these colors are. And so each one is about like, the first book is the shortest, so it's like a skinnier stripe. And then the fifth book is the longest, so it's like the fattest stripe. It just makes the coolest socks. I just thought that was so creative. So I'm going to be working on these, hopefully. Like I said, I still have those other socks, and I'm going to be knitting on um, Sock Week socks here soon. I'm so excited. Um, but I do want to kind of, I would like to start these. So I might have a lot of socks going, which is not my usual, my usual MO, but whatever. <laughs> I haven't been sticking to my sock routine this year anyway, so I can change it now. Um, but yeah, so mustache yarns, I believe she still makes this colorway on occasion. And then my mini for this is called um, Weasley Burrow. So that will be so much fun. I might have to make well, I was like, wait a second, I need to make um, 50 gram cozies for that yarn because I can't have, I can't knit socks now without my, my yarn cozies. And these two are already in use. <laughs> so who knows? It's kind of like if you, if you give a mouse a cookie, like they need a glass of milk, right? Like if you give me a pair of socks to knit, like I'm gonna need some yarn cozies. <laughs> so I don't know, so ridiculous. Okay. Lastly, <laughs> bringing me joy, um, I don't know, everything. I guess I should have saved the decorating thing for that because that's something that's, I, I don't know, really my creativity is like pumping. I, I was just telling Kent, my husband, um, I was like, I think I wanna rearrange the furniture down here and like get rid of this and like change the function of this room because this room needs to be like this. And I don't even know. I'm just, I'm just filling all the things right now. So I'm gonna try to, one thing at a time, get things done, and uh, yeah, just make our home a an awesome place. Um, everything I feel like is like, before I go back to work, before I go back to work, because who knows how crazy it's gonna be in the fall. Nobody knows. Um, we still don't know exactly what our school year is gonna look like, and we just have to be ready to roll with it. So trying to be flexible, hard for me, but <laughs> I am really trying. So anyway, that is it for this week. Make sure to 
um, get that mini yarn cozy code from the love letter video because the pattern comes out on Friday and I don't want you to have to pay full price. So make sure to do that or um, grab the bundle if you like both patterns. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you again next week. Bye. Can you shake? Can you shake? Can you shake? Twister, shake. Oh, good boy.